Well, this week it's Chris McCann's turn to join us for our financial discussion with Levin's Franks. And we'll be looking at the importance of making sure the savings and investments you own are actually suitable for you. So, Chris, first, how are you doing? I'm very well, thanks, Howard. And yourself? Yeah, nice to hear that. Well, then, how important is it that your financial planning is personalised for you? Well, listeners will have heard me mention on many occasions that having a personalised financial plan that considers tax planning, estate planning, investment planning and pension planning is essential. Everybody has different circumstances, preferences and objectives. So it's vitally important that each client's financial plan is suitable for them and them alone. Without a suitable plan, you leave yourselves open to unintended consequences for you and your family. When you meet with new clients, do you often find that their investments are not suitable for their circumstances or objectives? I do. I'm afraid that too often I find that people hold investments which are wholly inappropriate for them. Uh, By far the most common problem is that a client's investment portfolio does not match their attitude to risk. Some portfolios have too high a risk profile, typically due to inappropriate investments, inadequate diversification, or too high an exposure to illiquid illiquid assets. And some portfolios have too low a risk profile with too high an exposure to lower risk assets, offering little or no potential return. So what happens if their portfolio is too risky? And why would this be the case? Put simply, if your portfolio is too risky, it typically means that it's too volatile and has the potential to rise and fall in value more than you're comfortable with. The most obvious reason for why a portfolio might be too risky is because it holds inappropriate assets. For example, uh, for a low risk investor, a portfolio invested mainly in equities would be too risky and inappropriate. A less obvious reason is that a portfolio may not have adequate diversification. Under diversification is a major problem and you tend to find large swathes of the investing community trying to do it the same way at the same time. Put another way, under diversification is the narrowing of a portfolio down to essentially one or very few ideas. And the more people who have just the same ideas, the sooner the lights go out. To cite a a recent example, during 2021, we saw investors pile into technology stocks and cryptocurrencies. But during 2022, we saw technology stocks and cryptocurrencies get battered. As well as limiting your exposure across asset classes, Limiting your diversification within an asset class can be equally damaging. For example, holding the majority of an equity portfolio in only a few stocks isn't investing. It's Russian roulette. Bear in mind that the fewer ideas you have in your portfolio, the fewer bullets it will take to kill you. One idea only takes one bullet. What about the opposite? Can you have a portfolio that's too cautious? You can. Just as it's possible to have a portfolio that has too much risk, it's also possible to have a portfolio with not enough risk. If your portfolio is too cautious, it typically means that it will have too high an exposure to lower risk assets, such as cash or certain fixed interest investments and will offer lower potential returns than you require. The problem with holding too much of one's wealth as cash is that whilst interest rates have risen, they're still at relatively low levels. And even as central banks increase interest rates, the retail banks are slow to pass on these interest rate rises to savers. So if you are holding significant cash balances, 
considering current rates of inflation, you're likely generating returns that are still close to zero, if not still negative. Many uh, retirees favour low-risk safer investments, like bank deposits in their later years. But with a potential 30 years or more to fund in retirement, this can be a risky strategy. If you are retiring now at age 60, you need to plan for over 30 years of retirement. And unless your savings grow each year, they will buy you considerably less as the years go by. As a basic illustration, if you have €50,000 in a current account with no growth and inflation is 3% every year, after 10 years, its value will have fallen to around €37,000. After 20 years, its value will fall to around €27,500. And after 30 years, just €20,555. That's a 59% reduction in purchasing power over a 30-year period. So how does someone determine how much investment risk they can take? To help a client determine how much investment risk is suitable, we take them through a simple discipline process. The, the first step is to agree what their objectives are. The second step is to agree upon a plan to achieve their objectives. And the last piece of the puzzle is to decide upon a suitable, well-diversified portfolio to achieve their plan and ultimately their objectives. As a part of this process, from a risk point of view, we take each client through an academically designed suitability process, which helps us to determine their attitude to risk. With this information, we can ensure that they have the potential to generate the returns they require, but also ensure they do not take on too much risk. If any listeners are concerned that the risk profile of their investments is not suitable and would like to learn more about our approach, they simply need to contact one of our local partners. When buying new investments or reviewing existing ones, what other elements should people take into consideration besides their risk profile? At Blevins, Franks, we, we harness the expertise of our chosen investment partners to create solutions that are meticulously researched, diversified across a broad range of opportunities and dynamically managed to adapt to changes in global markets. At Blevins Franks, uh, a partner works with each client to find the most appropriate portfolio for their needs. The partner will build a precise understanding of each client's needs and will tailor a portfolio for each client, taking into account their existing investments, attitude to risk, and their financial goals. Tactical changes to the asset allocation are then made to ensure that their portfolios continue to be positioned correctly throughout their lives. What about taxation elements? What do expatriates in Spain need to consider tax-wise when buying new investments? For, for most of our clients, in a climate of rising taxes and with tax authorities more focused on the collection of taxes, a, a major benefit of the advice that we provide uh, is the resultant legal and legitimate tax savings. Despite the availability of ways to reduce one's tax liabilities in Spain, many people still fail to take advantage and unknowingly end up paying more than they should. This may include tax on investment income, capital gains when selling investments, and tax on their overall wealth. To maximise your investment returns and protect your wealth for future generations, you should, you, you need to make use of Spanish compliant arrangements, which will shelter your capital from tax, provide a tax efficient income, and facilitate the transfer of capital to your beneficiaries in a simple and tax-efficient manner. 
my advice to, to any listeners that have not yet investigated how they might structure their investments from a Spanish tax point of view should invest an hour or two of their time meeting with a local Blevinsrank's partner to learn about what's possible. There's no cost for an initial conversation and it might result in significant savings for many years to come. Finally, Chris, how often do you recommend people review and adjust their savings and investments? Well, as your financial plan is based on your circumstances, on your preferences and your objectives, which will change over time, it's important that the plan is reviewed on a regular basis. Market conditions and asset prices will also change, and so to ensure your investment portfolio remains appropriately structured, and in line with your risk profile, it will also need to be rebalanced on a regular basis. Blevins Franks are holding a series of seminars across Spain this spring. Will they be looking at investment issues? Uh, they will, Howard. Our, our seminars will cover tax, inheritance planning, investments and pensions, to provide some clarity on some of the issues expatriates in Spain have typically have questions about. The first seminars are in Denia and Benidorm on the 28th of February and the 2nd of March. Then we move to southern Spain with seminars in Soto Grande, Marbella and Fuenquerola on the 7th, 8th and 9th of March. Next, it's Almerimar and Cuevas del Almanzora in Almeria on 14th and 21st of March. Then De Gesa de Campo Amor in Alicante on the 22nd. We'll later have seminars in Mallorca and Tenerife at the end of April and early May. You can find full details of all our February and March seminars on our website, blevinsfranks.com, where you can also book your places online. It's been a pleasure, Chris. I'll talk again in about a month, I guess. Absolutely, Howard. Look forward to it.